Well, good morning. It's Dominic Steele and Daily Bible Time, and thank you for joining us. It is the 14th of November, Tuesday morning, and do continue to be in prayer for those um, pledge forms to come in. We're still waiting on 20 or so more forms to come in over the next um, 24 hours before our parish council meeting tomorrow night. We are today in the back half and praying for those forms and um, praying for generosity that we'll be able to meet our various targets for um 2024. Now we are in Isaiah chapter 65 today and uh, remember it was yesterday we saw the Lord's response. I, I was sought by those who did not ask. I was found by those who did not seek me because in 64 Isaiah and speaking as on behalf of the people have been calling out for God to come and put things right and God says I've always been coming. I've always been speaking and you were ignoring me. And that was the gist of the first seven, eight verses of Isaiah 65. But um, but he says, I am coming. I am going to judge and I'm going to put things right. And there's going to be consequences um, externally and internally. And then we get to verse eight of Isaiah 65. And there's a promise for those who are faithful within Israel. Um, as the new wine is found in a bunch of grapes and one says don't destroy it here's some good in it so i will act because of my servants and not destroy them all i will produce descendants from jacob and heirs to my mountains from judah my chosen ones who will possess it my servants who dwell there sharon will be a pasture for flocks and the valley of achor a, a place for herds to lie down for my people have sought me and so I'm reading verses 8, 9, 10, and 11 of Isaiah 65, and I'm thinking, ah, here is the faithful remnant within Israel. And God's saying, I will notice that you've been faithful. And so when I, I read of these verses 65, 8, 9, 10, I think, ah, this is Simeon and Anna, who, when we get to the time of Jesus, who are the faithful remnant, who, who, who are waiting on the Lord. And so I'll give you the couple of lines from Barry Webb. He says, there were those, however, who did dare to pray and went on praying for the coming of God's kingdom, not just Isaiah himself, but many who followed in his steps. They're the focus of attention in this second part of the chapter. They're God's servants, verse 9, people who seek him, verse 10, his chosen ones, verse 22, and a people blessed by the Lord, 23. They are the faithful remnant, the prayer warriors who've stayed at their post through the long, dark watches of salvation history, never abandoning their trust in God or their confidence that his promises would be fulfilled. And the good news of this chapter is that the new world for which they've waited will surely come. God will bring it to pass for their sake and gather them into it. And I think, yeah, that's who I want to be. And so let me just go back down to the... Um, bottom of the chapter and um and the promise there that um well from verse 17 i will create new heavens and a new earth the past events will not be remembered or come to mind then be glad rejoice forever in what i'm creating i'll create jerusalem to be a joy and its people to be a delight i'll rejoice in jerusalem i'll be glad in my people the sound of weeping and crying will no longer be heard in her in her a nursing infant will no longer live only a few days or an old man not live out his days Indeed, the one who dies at a hundred years old will be mourned as a young man, and the one who misses a hundred years will be considered cursed. People will build houses and live in them. They'll plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They'll not build and others live in them. They'll not plant and others eat. For my people's lives will be like the lifetime of a tree. My chosen ones will enjoy the work of their hands. They'll not labour without success or bear children destined for disaster. They'll be a people blessed by the Lord along with their descendants. Even before they call, I will answer. While they're still speaking, I will hear. And so that's just such a lovely picture. Um, as Webb says, um, there's something more here than the realisation of the utopian dream. A glorified Israel that would be the wonder and envy of the world again, as in the days of Solomon. It's a whole new order of things in which all political structures are transcended. It'll be so new that the past will be forgotten entirely. The promised land will no longer be Canaan or Israel, but the whole earth, as we saw in chapter 62. The new Jerusalem will be so different from the old, it'll require a new name. The servants of God will be all who found mercy and free pardon through the work of the perfect servant, all God's faithful people in every age. The chapter ends 
with an unmistakable allusion to the final undoing of the work of the serpent who brought sin and death into the world in the first place. The new world will be history perfected, paradise regained, will be full of modest and simple delights that God always intended us to have. Joy, verse 18, fullness of life, verse 20, security, 21, 23, rewarding work, 22, fellowship with God and peace. And it's breathtaking. However, He's not a universalist. Um, he does not believe all will be saved. There's a contrast in this chapter between those who are God's servants and those who are not, and it's drawn even more starkly, and their destinies are as different as light and dark. There are the saved and the lost in this chapter. There is heaven and hell. Um, and the demarcation line says, Webb, not ethnic or political, but personal and confessional. So um, let me just give you that. It's from, um, whew, well, here it is, verse um, 12, um, verse 11. You who abandon the Lord, who forget my holy mountain, who prepare a table for fortune and fill bowls of mixed wine for destiny, I'll destiny you for the sword, and all of you will kneel down to be slaughtered. I called, you did not answer. I spoke, you did not hear. You did what was evil in my sight and chose what I did not delight in. Um, very clear, the alternate destination. I'll just give you one last line, last line of the chapter, and um, this is lovely. Um, it's just a sign of the, um, well, the cosmic nature, the, um, the, uh, the undoing of the curse, that the last line, is the wolf and lamb will feel to feed together. The lion will eat straw like cattle. The serpent's food will be dust. They will not do what is evil or destroy. On my holy mountain, says the Lord, the serpent's food will be dust. The wolf and lamb will lie down together. That's no more sin. The undoing of the curse. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this vision that Isaiah gives us. And we pray that we would... Um, Trust in this vision, even today, and trust in the filled out vision that we see in Jesus, we see in Revelation and in other parts of the New Testament. And we long for the day when Jesus will return, put all right, and bring this vision to fruition. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks for joining us on Daily Bible Time today. See you tomorrow morning. God bless.